Hi, welcome back to ODE. My name is Paulo and I'm here again to show you another pen that is quite personal for me because I really like it. I can call it maybe a grail pen, although a grail pen is the kind of pen that you have in your mind that you want to get and it stays there and you will not forget about it. Uh, this is a pen that's a little bit different. I'm showing you a pen that is discontinued now and I saw it some years ago in a store and I thought this pen is gorgeous, I want to have it and I didn't think of ever getting it and it left the, the store so I never thought it about again but then because I know someone that makes repairs on fountain pens and sometimes they have, he has some pens to sell here in Portugal and he showed me this one, he had this one and he had the white one and I had to buy it. Okay, now let's see what I have here and what I have is a Graf von Faber Castell. So the pen comes inside this kind of box which has these white sleeve made of paper, cardboard, and you have a very strong cardboard box with some wood parts and it says here Graf von Faber-Castell and has the coat of arms of the brand of, or the family and it closes with a magnet so you have to lift this and then the other part and you have a little booklet with the same kind of design with the information, some products and instructions on how to use. It has this little bag, cloth bag, and inside we have the pen. And this pen that I'm reviewing today is the Graf von Faber-Castell Intuition. The color of the pen is Terra and terra comes from terracotta which is the color of kind of uh, very dark burnt orange almost red that's how i would describe it so let's put the package aside and talk about the pen so this is a beautiful pen a beautiful design and this is the kind of stuff that I really, really, really enjoy. And I enjoy this for, I would say, several reasons. One of those, and I think it's really something that I value a lot in fountain pens, which is the way they are based. Some of them are based in previous designs and they make kind of an update, but you can see the original design there. And just let me show you how, what I'm thinking about. This is the Graf von Faber-Castell Classic, which is slimmer. This is larger, but look at the cap, the same kind of stuff. It flares, it flares out a little bit here, but this one is much more pronounced. The clip has the same kind of shape. This is more stylized stylized however it's more modern also cap band and also the metal part on the end of the barrel so i would say there is some inspiration on that pen and i really enjoy that but then it has this great twist so what you have is we have a let's look again we have a almost cylindrical cap that flares out on the top and we have a cylindrical barrel with a knurled shiny metal end. Now, like if it was a maybe a piston knob or something like that, it's not, but we'll look at that. You have the clip and oriented with the clip we have the Graf von Faber Castell logo that we saw on the cap also in a, a metal medallion and outside in the black let's call it like a dish because it is a concave part it has Graf von Faber-Castell engraved and the logo there engraved very beautiful uh, it has this clip that is very springy 
you will not have any problems in using it. It has a black cap with a metal uh, band that says Grafon Faber Castell, and on the other side it says Handmade in Germany. On the end of the barrel, you will see again like a little, again a little concave surface with again the logo of the Graf von Faber Castell. So I think these are really great details about the pen. More that I have to say about this. Unlike this one that has a screw fit cap, this one is not a screw fit, it clicks in place. So you have to take it out and where is the section, where is the section, there is no section. You may think, okay, the section, no, that's not the section, you're not supposed to hold the pen there, this is not a way to grip the pen. The barrel that is almost cylindrical, and I'm not sure if you can see it, it uh, narrows here and then flares out again there, so it makes kind of that hour shaped section that you find in other pens, but without a step from the barrel to the section. So this is great, so this is the barrel, there is no section and this is the pen. You may think, no, that's a section. No. Actually, if you want to think about it, this could be the barrel, this could be a very big section, and then the nib. The nib you have on this pen, it is a gold nib. 18 carat, I think you can see the 18 there. Carat, gold nib. This is a fine nib, two-tone, with the same logo that we have seen before. The feed, I think it is made of plastic, and I think this is quite a good pen nib and feed system. Now, what we have here, how do we, we, how do we access the, the filling system? You could think that you would do like this, but you don't really have lots of room. Let me grab another pen just to show it to you. You have this uh, Tibaldi Perfecta that has a quite narrow section there, and that's not called it section also, but you have to unscrew this part to access the nib. It is quite hard because you don't have lots of room, you can see there. On the Graf von Faber Castell, it is even smaller. And when you try to do that, you almost always put ink in your fingers. Here you have an even smaller part, so you cannot really unscrew that. So the way they made this, I think it is quite clever and nice. You have this knob that you turn, and while you turn, the nib comes out. So you can hold there, you keep unscrewing until it gets loose. Now it's loose and it comes out as the part where the cartridge or the converter goes and then you can refill the pen. Then you put, it has this um, sided insert so it will fit there in this part and will not keep rotating and that's it. I think now you put it back there and it just have to screw this and it will keep it will come in place. Now one thing that I noticed in this pen and I have to say that in my opinion this pen has only two downsides. We can talk about the third one which is the cost. This pen costs around 300 or even more euros. It depends on the color. Maybe this color is more sought after. So it may come it is discontinued now so there are people that may be looking for it and may go to 300 euros or 350, so it can go higher on price. But let's not talk about the price uh, about that. I would just say that this pen could deserve a bigger nib than a number 5 nib. And also, I would prefer that this logo would perfectly align with the nib. Now, if the nib is upward, this is like that. Something that I noticed, and I'm not sure, I cannot be completely sure of this, of what I'm saying, is that it seems 
depending on the temperature, on the room temperature, these will be more aligned or less. Maybe the materials will contract or uh, enlarge and it will fit different in different uh, atmospheric conditions. Maybe it's that. Now, let's compare it with our usual Parker Centennial Lufold Big Red. That is a bigger pen, but the girth is almost the same. And the Lamy LX Ruthenium. When we uncap the three pens, you will see that the Grafon Faber Castell is the smallest one. No problem about that, but because of the girth, I think the nib could be a number six nib. That is my opinion, and I, 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 it is one of the downsides of the pen. By the way, when you're writing with this pen, you can write with it like this. It's perfectly comfortable to hold. You can hold the pen whenever you want. It is long enough, so you don't have problems in the size of your hands. But even if you prefer to post the pen, you can post. The pen is mainly, the cap is mainly made out of plastic or resin or whatever. So you can hold the pen perfectly with a very good balance. It's not back heavy and you can work with it very well posted or unposted as you prefer. I prefer to use it unposted. I just want to show it now before next to the the Faber-Castell rethink which is a writing uh, I'm not sure how to say it. it. I think it has something in common in terms of general design and just to show it next to other pens with this kind of uh, or coral orangey burnt thing color in this white balance it's getting crazy because this is the Monte Grappa, Monte Grappa coral and this is really a color a coral colored pen not a pink pen so this is so strange but believe me it's because of the of the white balance if you want to reproduce some colors correctly sometimes we cannot do the same with others. I would say these are quite uh, real. This is not as pink as it seems. But here we have some selection of pens that may look kind of similar. Now let's go to the writing sample. And here we have the pen and paper. And let's take a look at how it writes. So this is the graph von Faber Castell Intuition Terra with a fine gold nib. The paper is the usual Rodia dot pad, and the ink is the Graf von Faber Castell uh, blue violet blue or blue violet. Violet blue, I think. This pen writes really well. If there is something we have to say about Graf von Faber Castell nibs, is that they are perfectly tuned. This pen has almost no feedback. It writes with no skips, no problems. It has a fine line that it's real fine. You can try to get some line variation, but the pen is not made for flexing. It is quite a rigid nib, but it is perfect in terms of adjustment. It's usual that Grafon Faber-Castell or Faber-Castell nibs are usually very good. About the reverse writing, it runs dry and it stops writing. Otherwise, in the right way, the pen writes Perfectly, I think the, the the relation with the pen and the feed is really good to provide a good pen, a good flow for a fine nib. You see, this this ink is not very saturated, so the flow is good. It's not a problem of flow. You can see it smears a lot, so it means it's quite a wet nib for such a fine nib. This is really a great pen. 
So, this is all I have to show, to show you today. I have to thank you a lot for watching, to enjoy one of the pens that is one of my favorites that I forgot for some years and now I could get it. I will ask you if you have some of some pen like this that you desired a lot then you forgot about it and sometime later you got to get the pen. So it is interesting for me to know. If you want let, leave me that on comments below. I'll try to leave links maybe for eBay to try to to see if you can find this pen and I'll try to leave links for the other pens that I showed you, maybe you are interested. And this is all I had to show you. We will see you next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe by the way. Bye!